What's the word, y'all? All right, this video should feel um, similar to like last year. Remember last year, after an entire slate of games, I used to come out here and with no cuts, no edits, no hiccups, talk about like eight games in one video. How the heck did I do that? I can't, I mean, oh, okay, today's video, I'm attempting that. But instead of talking about eight games, I want to talk about two teams because there are two teams that are heating up right now. Like we're about the 20 game mark of the NBA season. And with that, we've seen some teams start off hot and cool down. And we saw some teams start off cold and heat up. And two teams that are heating up right now, I've been really enjoying watching. And those teams are the Boston Celtics and the Minnesota Timberwolves. You can decide for yourself which version of these teams you believe in. Is it the two weeks ago when they were struggling? or is it the right now where they're heating up either way i just want to shine some light on two organizations that have been really really cool um i've never shied away from the idea that this is a reactionary channel right we basically take the nba day by day and with that we will overreact to some things that is 100 true um and one thing we definitely overreacted to is when i say we i mean me because i'm the one talking and making a video was the boston celtics earlier in the season and some of it was warranted right they just blew it a huge lead to the chicago bulls then after that they had to have a players only meeting which i am pro players only meeting by the way every time a team has a player only meeting it seems like that team takes off so far i was listening to no dunks this morning there were there are four different teams that have had players only meetings the first one being the um the the washington Wizards before the season even started and they turned out starting the season on fire the second one being the boston Celtics, and again since that moment they're seven to three in their last 10 and then the last one was the memphis grizzlies who lost by 40 like two nights ago and then just beat um was it the utah jazz on jaron jackson jr's game winner so players only meetings Big W. But this is a team that had a players-only meeting. Marcus Smart went out to the public, to the media, and, and said some things out of frustration. Everybody was overreacting, me included. And since then, the team has turned around completely. And there are a couple different things I want to talk about as far as the bullet points of what has changed between then and now. First one being, Dennis Schroeder has been hooping really, really well. I mean, the, the graphic after the Lakers game was hilarious. Y'all paying Russell Westbrook X amount of money while Dennis Schroeder's here making $5 million. It's hilarious because in that moment, in those couple games, he has been killing. He had another game where he had 30 plus on national TV. Then he went against the Lakers and had another one. Like he has been playing basically the version of Dennis Schroeder we thought they were going to get, they're starting to get at this point. Another one is health, man. They had missed Jalen Brown for eight games. They missed Robert Williams. Like, having two starters missing is going to hurt a lot of teams. And the last one, and I think the most important one, has to do with Ime Udoka's coaching. Um, I think in that moment, if I can go back and retrospect, talk about the Celtics again when they blew that huge lead, I should have probably shined the light on Ime Udoka being a first-year coach. And basically... His priority, if you remember in his his um, interviews, he was talking about this is a team that needs to learn the identity and be great on the defensive side of the ball. Now, what I saw in the first couple weeks compared to now was Ime Udoka tinkering with his rotations and trying to figure out the players that he believes can contribute to having an elite level defense. And it seems like he's finally found that recipe because since those days, since the Bulls game, they have been one of the best defensive teams in the league. Where are my statistics? Where are my statistics? Because in the last two weeks, the defense has been absolutely stellar um and this is what we used to do back in the day okay so in the last two weeks they have the fifth best defense and the 13th best offense seventh in point differential and they've won some key games they've won some key games so you have Ime Udoka finally find the, finding the defense. Shout out to Grant Williams. I love the P.J. Tucker comparison for Grant Williams because I feel like that's the that's the career that Grant Williams is about to have. I remember like years ago, a tweener type player was like a terrible person to draft. And then Draymond Green stepped onto the scene as a tweener and became an all-star defensive player of the year. Now teams are like, oh, we want that tweener because he can guard two through fours and sometimes the fives. And Grant Williams, even though he's kind of been up and down, he is P.J. Tucker light, bro. He sits in the corners, and he hits his corner shots, and he plays good high-level defense. It's kind of crazy there. So all of that, and then since that, we've seen Jason Tatum turn back into Jason Tatum. We have to remember that JT was slumping heavily, looking like a shell of his former self. And, it, and maybe a week or two ago, I was talking about, like, when do we start to have the, the conversation about Jason Tatum? You don't have to have it anymore. Because, look, look, I, I'm taking full credit for awakening Jason Tatum. Because here, here's some context. There was a game. Um, House of Highlights on their Instagram story. They they had a poll going up. Who would who do you think would win a game of horse? And one of the slides was Jason Tatum and Zach Levine. And me being from the shot, I'm like, I'm going to take Zach Levine. Even though Zach Levine, I'm pretty sure, lost to Ali Quigley. You remember the NBA actually did a horse thing during the pandemic? Crazy. He lost to Ali Quigley in that thing. So maybe he, um, Jason Tatum is a be better horse player. But what I did... To start some controversy, you know what I'm saying? See what's going on. I took that Instagram post. I cropped the the knockout version. 
and just kept the verse, the the text that said, "Who you taking?" Oh, and I put that on Twitter, and I said, we need to start a dialogue. And since that moment, Jason Tatum has not put up less than 30 points per game. Did I awake him? Because y'all was tagging him in that post. I saw Y'all was tagging him. In, no, but realistically, um, he's just finding his groove. And in that players only meeting with Marcus Smart, he was talking about how he needs those younger players, what Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, to, to learn how to play make better because everybody knows they want the ball to go to Jason and they want the ball to go to Jalen, but they have to figure out that secondary read when those two things aren't working. And Jason Tatum in the last X amount of games has been playmaking the hell out of the ball. So a lot of things are coming around for them. Um, do you believe them to be there? I think we've all agreed that they're going to be a playoff team. That's just, they just have the talent to be a playoff team. But what level of playoff team is what we have to decide re, uh, next. Al Horford has still been really good. And then Rob Williams returned all the energy in the world. So um, shout out to the Celtics, man, putting it together. The next team is the Minnesota Timberwolves. I'll be honest with you. I'm a little bit more excited about the Minnesota Timberwolves. Even though, let's be realistic, um, their four-game win streak has been kind of a cakewalk. Bro, I, I didn't want to edit this video. Then the dogs start barking. What am I supposed to do? Did y'all want to hear Jax barking in the background of this video? So I got to edit it. Um, I want to talk about the Minnesota, Minnesota Timberwolves because it's been fun to watch them. Now, the four-game win streak, it's not like they've been out there beating up on playoff teams, but this is a team that had uh, struggled to even beat up on the teams that are less talented than them. But in this four-game win streak, they beat the Kings by 10. They beat the Spurs by 15. They beat the Grizzlies by a million points. And then they beat the uh, Pelicans by about 14. And again, there's a team that lost to the Pelicans earlier in the season. So this four-game win streak, might be like the, one of the easier parts of the schedule, but this is a team that wasn't closing out these games regardless. Now, the upcoming piece of the schedule is about to be a little bit more difficult. Um, they have the Miami Heat. That is tomorrow. Then they have the Hornets, who've been who've been on fire as well. You have the 76ers, who just beat the Kings with like six players. Um, you have the Pacers, who just beat the Bulls by 50. So like the part of your part of the schedule is about to get a little bit tougher. But let's talk about what I've seen uh, from the Minnesota Timberwolves during this stretch. And the main thing, is this team, we've mentioned this before because this has kind of been a consensus throughout the year, but it's even elevated right now. This team has been playing defense. What? And, and listen, listen, listen. There are players in their careers, right, that after a few games, we kind of have this consensus hive mind idea about them on one side of the ball, right? D'Angelo Russell in his career has always been a negative defensive player. We can all agree on that. No matter the stop, even when he was an all-star, he was a good offensive player and a huge negative on defense. Well, this year, ladies and gentlemen, the eye test tells me D'Angelo Russell was actually defending. Oh, that's scary. D'Angelo Russell defending. Patrick Beverly has, has put a stamp on this team that, that you wanted as a Minnesota Timberwolves fan. Because this is a team, again, that had been a pushover for years and years. And again, I, I'm overreacting a bit to the four-game win streak, but just, just hear me out. This is a team that that you felt like could get smacked in the face whenever, and nobody was going to do nothing about it. And Patrick Beverly's grit and his teaching has definitely trickled down. You have Patrick Beverly, you have Jerry Vanderbilt holding it down on the defensive side of the ball. You can't tell me that stuff like that isn't contagious. And we're seeing it on the Eastern Conference, and I, yes, I'm going to compare it to the Bulls too, um, because you you got to remember, a team of Zach Levine, Vucevic, and DeMar DeRosa should not be a good defensive team, but when you have a couple players in the lineup that are great defenders, that can be infectious. Lonzo Ball and Alex Caruso is doing that for the Bulls and for the Minnesota Timberwolves is Jared Vanderbilt and it's Patrick Beverly. Pat Bev might not might not have the great game where he has 20 points, six rebounds, six assists. He might have that occasionally, but sometimes you look at the stat line and be like, man, is Patrick Beverly just running around right out there? And I gotta ask, are you a box score watcher? Because his defensive intensity, his leadership has definitely trickled down on this team. And it's been fun to watch recently. It's been really fun to watch. Now, me being me, I try to be an optimistic person, but I gotta I gotta simmer down a little bit because it is the Minnesota Timberwolves, and they always find a way. Carthony Towns earlier this season was like, hey, I'm here in Minnesota. A three-game losing streak could turn into 22, or what do you say, 18 or something. It can. <laughs> Hopefully, they can have the same mindset. A four-game win streak can turn into this. Uh, but this is a team, when you look at talent, I think a lot of people agree that this, this should be a team fighting for a playing spot. And at the moment, that's exactly what they're doing. 
That's exactly what they're doing. And in order to make a play in and to make a postseason appearance, you have to beat the teams that you are better than, the teams that, that are less talented than you. And the last couple games, they've been able to do that. Now, if they could continue to do that through this season and occasionally steal one versus the team that's better than you, I mean, I don't see a world where this team doesn't at least make the play in. Right now, there's 10 teams right here that I could say, nine teams here that I can say confidently will probably make the postseason, right? The 10th spot is up for grabs for Minnesota, maybe the Kings if they start to turn things around, but that's it. You know what I'm saying? So Minnesota should be in the driving seat to have that 10th seed spot because they have Carl Anthony Towns, one of the best offensively gifted big mans um, in, in this era. They have Anthony Edwards who can heat up and score, what do you have, six threes in the first half of a game. And D'Angelo Russell, if he's playing defense and occasionally hit his shots for you, boom. Now, I do... I do fear for them again once they get to those close game situations because I feel like though that's where they crumble most of the time. And in this four-game win streak, I just read off the point differential, they've been dominating teams. So when they get down to the nitty-gritty, it's a three-point game with two minutes to go. We will see what version of the team we're going to get. But them beating up on some of these teams has been really, really interesting. Um, D'Angelo Russell playing defense is, is kind of wild. 